Hello? Ma? Hmm. What's this? Come to think of it, I haven't seen her for a few days. She usually stops by here every morning. See that odd fellow in green skulking around town? Dropped on his head when he was young, talking nonsense and mumbling about. Haven't seen him since the boy slew the dragon. You really believe he did? Of course I do. Haven't you heard? The storm around Crandor has lifted, and some are heading there to rebuild the city. I don't know where you are, or who took you, but I will find you. My name is Ingus. Names are important as they tell you a great deal about a person, and I have been called by many. Lightfinger, Dragon Slayer, Ingus the Undying. In the north they call me Storm Rider. The gnomes and citizens of Marim call me Demon Spain, and all of Gilinor knows me as King of the Pirates. I've earned those names, bought, and paid for them, but I was brought up as Ingus. My mother once told me it meant to be free. I've stolen lost artifacts from ancient tombs. I infiltrated an island of monkeys and apes to prevent a war. I was sacrificed to a monster lurking beneath the poison waste. I have visited the world of dreams and left with both my sanity and my life. I sail by moonlight to places that others fear to speak of during the day. I've slain Elvarg the Dreadful and watched the dead prey on the living. I have sunk ships, loved women, and sailed to every port and island under the sun. You may have heard of me. Ahoy there! Ingus here. Welcome to episode 6 of King of the Pirates. For those new to the series, the rules are simple. No banking, no trading. I can only obtain items and experience in the following areas on the map. I can journey onto the mainland for clue scrolls, and of course, I get to keep whatever treasure I find. I can also complete quests that unlock new islands. Remember, this is the pirate code, and the code is more what you'd call guidelines than actual rules. Enjoy, you s enjoy, you scallywags. Word spread fast as soon as I had slain the dragon Elvark, and my name was the topic of most conversations around the ports. It was my first taste of fame, and what can I say? Citizens showed their gratitude in more ways than one. Not everyone believed the story, of course. Most of the pirates I met just assumed it was hogwash. After all, Pirates aren't the most reputable when it comes to telling true stories. Gaining the respect of my fellow pirates didn't really bother me though. I'd earn it soon enough. A few things changed since I was away. The word is that a group of Draenor purists burned down the newly finished dock. It was fun while it lasted, but now I had no way to get there. Unlike the Draenorians, the people of Remington welcomed a new port, and the boost to the economy that came with it. Although most Remington tourists were pirates, most of them behaved for one reason. The crafting shop. To get a decent amulet or glove slot on this account, we need to obtain the jewelry molds. Previously, we were going for 44 construction to build the tool store 4 which would give us unlimited access to them. But there was a slight problem. To build tools, to build, to build tools, to build tool store four, we would need two oak planks, not to mention an additional six oak planks to build tool stores one through three. Without access to the sawmill or woodcutting guild, the only realistic way we can obtain oak planks is through catching eclectic implings. This requires 50 hunter, meaning that I would need to catch 1,340 crimson swifts or 4,553 buckets of sandworms until level 42 where I could switch to horned grocks for the remainder of the levels. And then that's not even counting the 100 plus trips we'd need to make to Port Kazard for planks to get to 44 construction, as well as finding eclectic implings and actually receiving oak planks from them. We can now bypass all of that and simply buy the jewelry mold whenever we want. This single tiny update 
has saved us an insane amount of time. There are three things I want to get. The Amulet of Strength, the Amulet of Magic, and the Dig Sight Necklace. The first two are huge upgrades to our offensive stats in comparison to the Bone Necklace, which only gives plus one to our stats. And the Dig Sight Necklace would make it so we would have a direct teleport to Fossil Island, which will be incredibly useful in the days to come. To make all of these, I'll need to get 50 crafting. The gems are easy enough to obtain from Ogress Warriors, but we'll need 40 mining and 40 smithing to have a consistent method of obtaining gold bars. Since I'm talking to you from the future, let me just say that no, I did not know about the gold bar spawn near the Ogress Warriors at this time. Yeah. Oh baby, we have another clue scroll. Let's go do it. I think this is the chest. Sweet, we got the casket. Please be something good. <laughs> I mean, it's unique. It's pretty rare. I'll give it that. Haha, <laughs> it is our lucky day today, boys. I think this is the last step. Yep, sweet. Got the casket. Let's just open it. I was not expecting anything good there, to be honest. Yes! A break from the monotony. Let's go. Okay, it has literally taken me like 40 minutes to complete this easy clue. Please be the casket. Yes, finally. Okay. <sighs> Let's just build this real quick. And now for the loot. Oh my god! We cannot get this any other way on this account. Are you kidding me? That is sick. Damn. <laughs> you know, I never thought I was going to be this excited to get an air staff, but man, what a rush. I don't know where the actual clip went, but we got this hard clue scroll at Greater Demons, and unfortunately we can't do it because we need a piece of heraldic armor. So, looks like we're going to have to drop it. So the first thing I need to do is go get some gems from Ogress Warriors, but we are going to need some more knives to do that. So back to bronze bars. All right, hopefully this goes pretty quick. We need one sapphire and two rubies. There's the sapphire down and 62 range. All right, we have quite a few gems now, so I think we are done here. Oh ho ho ho. What's it going to be? Ah, uh, we can't use that. Oh well. Let's get some free crafting XP. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I sold the extra rubies to the shop. Now, I still have a few knives left over, so may as well go use them. Oh man, I thought I was going to have to go back and make some more bronze knives, but luckily we got it. So, we are done. Alright, we have obtained our gems, and now the easy part is out of the way. Time for the hard part. I have all these runes in my inventory, so I thought I may as well go kill some more greater demons because they have a rare chance of dropping a gold bar, so that could save us quite a bit of time if we're lucky. No luck so far, but there's 57 magic. What's the drop? More coins. Hey, 58 magic. We have still not gotten anything yet except like steal two H's, but still going strong. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to kill this one because we are out of runes. And if you can't tell by my inventory, no gold bar. When we go to train crafting, we're gonna need some inventory space anyways. So I think what I'm gonna do is go finish off some construction levels. First, we'll need to buy some more nails. Level 29, sweet. All right, we have finished off the construction. We have 30, which you'll see why we need in a bit. But next up is mining. We're gonna need 40 mining, 40 smithing, and I think I have an idea for that. First up, we actually gotta go buy a pickaxe, and the best one we can buy is a bronze pickaxe from this shop over here. Got it. I don't know how good this is gonna be, but we have all these nature runes. So what we're gonna do is mine the iron and coal, turn it into steel bars and smith that. I have no idea if this is actually like a decent method, but we're just gonna try it out for a little bit, see how it works. I don't know how much longer I can do this. I'll just speed up the clip so you can see how long it takes to get this coal. So now we're gonna superheat these and click on the right ore actually. And then <laughs> we're gonna go up north to that anvil. Cool, 
37 smithing, and we can now make some steel knives. If that's ever a thing, we can now do it. Okay, I think I'm gonna give up on this method. It's just not that fast, and to be honest, I don't mind dropping these nature roots. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so I have another plan though. So while I was at the Karamja mine, I noticed there was a silver rock and that got me thinking, what if I buy a tiara mold from the shop at Remington and then go mine some silver ore? The bronze pickaxe is just way too slow for me, so we can actually get an iron pickaxe from the ammonite crabs. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but we're just gonna need all the time saving we can get. <laughs> Let's go! That was our third kill. That's awesome. We do not have to be here for a while. The reason I'm thinking about silver ore is that everything can be found in the Tazar area. We got the rocks, we got the furnace. Should be pretty good. We just got an entire inventory of silver ore. And I realized I didn't have the tiara mold. Honestly, this method isn't that bad. Oh, and uh, there's 41 crafting. But the silver ore just takes way too long to mine, even though we have the iron pickaxe. But I think I might just have to go train each one individually just to be the most efficient with my time. If these sell for a little bit, then maybe I'll change my mind, but I don't know. Let's just see. Never mind, we are definitely not going to do this. So I don't think many people know about this, but there is a iron mine like right here that is almost never populated. Yeah, so the plan is to just power mine some iron until we get to 40. I can already tell you that this is so much better than coal and there's 35 mining. Hey, and there's 40. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. We only spent like, you know, 30, 40 minutes on this, so glad it's over with. We have gotten our inventory down to 20 free spaces, which is the perfect amount for training crafting. So let's go blow some glass. Honestly, this will probably take longer than the mining because we need to get 50 crafting, which is almost double the XP that we already have. 42 crafting, and we can now make fish bowls, which is nice because we can get some more XP. There's 43. Oh, hey, we can we can craft diamonds. That'll be really nice because I'm tired of selling uncut ones. There's 46. It has definitely been like a couple hours, but at least now we can craft orbs. And that'll just boost our XP just a little bit more. Hey, 49 crafting. We are on the home stretch right now. This is taking quite a bit longer than I thought, but that's okay. We are almost there. Oh, here it is. Yes, 50 crafting. Finally, man. It has been quite a few hours of just buying these buckets and coming to this furnace and walking back. But we are done. All that's left is 40 smithing. And of course, you already know where we're going to go. There it is, 38 smithing. We only need 7,000 experience to get to 40, which doesn't sound like much, but when you take into account that these bronze bars only give 12.5 experience each, we're going to have to be here for probably a couple hours. There's 39 smithing. All I can really think about at this point is how many bronze knives I'm gonna have to use up after this, but that's okay, we'll get some free range levels. This is it, the last one. <sighs> There we go, 40 smithing, and a shit ton of bronze bars as well. It is time we can finally make some jewelry. It has been a couple days for this grind, I'm not gonna lie. But guess what? We dropped all of our gems so we could train. So we are going to Catherby to buy our gear back and head to Ogres Warriors again. All right, we just need two rubies and one sapphire. It is time, my friends. We have our gems. Just gotta cut these up and we're good to go. There it is, the gold ore. And there's our gold bars. All right, first up, let's make the ruby amulet. So you're probably wondering, how do I get a ball of wool to string my amulets? Well, I'm glad you asked. As far as I've researched, there are no sheep that I can access on any of the islands I've unlocked so far. There is one creature that drops the ball of wool. Yes, that is right. The imps are actually pretty useful for this one reason. Okay, we've definitely hit like 50 kill count at least <laughs> so far. It's been like an imp. It's been an imp massacre, let's just say that. Yeah, hopefully we just get that ball. 
Oh. All right. Um, sweet. We got our first amulet right here. Let's go. Bazoop. Oh, there's the second one. That's the second one. We got it. We got the amulets. Oh, boy. Time to enchant these. First up, the amulet of magic. Yes, dude. Okay, and here it is. Finally, we are done. This amulet of strength is actually going to be insane because it adds like plus two or three to our max hit. And the amulet of magic is not that bad either. We have plus 24 magic attack bonus for our mage setup. While I was on my quest for the jewelry, I found my thoughts drifting towards my mother's disappearance. I kept asking around but no one seemed to recognize the mysterious green fabric. There was only one person I could turn to. Your mother has disappeared. How strange. What do you make of this, Bill Teach? Hmm. This looks like something the Fremenics might use, but good luck getting there. The Fremenics aren't very fond of outsiders. 